Oh, a big vicious dog like you, Hazel. Huh? Are you going to bite their hands off? So recently I had a friend reach out to me and he had an incident where there was a dog on a property on a food delivery he was performing and the dog got a little bit growly, a little bit aggressive with him. He reached out afterwards, he was safe in the situation of course, I was very lucky, got out of there, no injuries. But he asked me the question, and I thought I'd address it today, what happens if I'm bit by a dog when I'm doing food deliveries? So today I'm gonna to run through two things. The first thing I'm going to run through is a tip that I got from a meter reader, a guy who goes around reading electricity meters at properties on how him and his company dealt with dogs. And the second is I'm going to deal with practical advice if you got bitten by a dog and what to do legally. So the first thing I'm going to talk about today is avoidance. And this is a tip from a friend who was a meter reader every single day, eight hours a day, would go around onto people's properties to read their electricity meters. So he taught me this one tip on how to avoid or become aware that there is a dog on the premises. And guys, I'm not talking about Cerberus, the three-headed dog guarding the river Styx and the underworld where Hades is hanging out. No, I'm talking about just your run-of-the-mill retail family friend, man's best friend, doggo on the property, doing his duty and guarding the yard. So when you arrive to a property and it's gated and you're not sure if there's a dog in there or not, the easiest way to ascertain that information, and this is the tip from the meter reader, is put your hand on the fence and give it a hard shake and wait a few seconds. Now, if there is a dog on the premises, they'll make themselves known. They'll start barking or they'll come running to the front gate to see what's going on. Uh, after a few seconds, if there's no response, I guess, from uh, no barking, no dog running up and stuff, the chances are there is no dog on the property or maybe they're inside or there's a sealed section out the back. But you should hear them barking if they are out the back anyway. If a customer comes down and says, why are you shaking my gate? Say, hey guys, it's all good. I just wasn't sure if there was a dog on the premises shaking the gate lets me know because a dog will start barking or come running out to see what it is uh, luckily no dog here on the property so thank you it's all good guys here's your food and you hand it across to them so guys people will understand if you explain it that way why you shook their gate it's completely reasonable now let's move into the legal kind of stuff if you got bitten by a dog while performing a food delivery on contract so hypothetical you've entered a property you're doing a food delivery and then as you drop the food off and walking back to the car you get attacked by a dog it comes up and bites you causes an injury what do you do well first and foremost is to get safely off the property and then tend to any medical injuries that you have immediately. If you can drive to the doctors, drive across to the doctors. If you need an ambulance because it's a severe bite or you're bleeding out or whatever it might be, call 000 or 911 or whatever the emergency number is in your uh, country. Call them up, get an ambulance, get medical assistance immediately. Now, after you've attended to the immediate wounds, you're safe, you're sound, it's healing over, make sure that you have photos of the injury, make sure you have the customer's address, make sure you have a picture of the dog if possible as well. So these are all things that you can either return to the property for, or alternatively, uh, you can take them photos on the scene. Now, once you have your evidence of what happened, there's two paths you can take. The first path is the simple path, that's contacting across the delivery platform, notifying them of a dog attack. Now this first path you need to do regardless. So contact the delivery platform, that way there is a record of a dog attack occurring when you were on a food delivery for that company. Give them all the details, the times, the address, the date. Put up the photos guys, send the photos across of the injuries from the dog to them. Now what the delivery platforms will do is they're going to try to create a settlement for you and the settlement is going to be from the company and they're going to offer medical costs. So I know this because recently there was a driver in my area who got bitten by a dog and the delivery platform offered to pay for medical costs, which was a $80 tetanus shot from the doctors. And that was all, just the payment for a medical shot for tetanus because of a dog bite, that's all they got. Now, if you're happy for that and you don't wanna go through the rigmarole of everything else, you can take the settlement for medical, move on, get back to driving, get back to work, get back to whatever you were doing when you're healed up and proper. Now, if you do accept the medical costs paid by the delivery company that's a settlement and you cannot go any further with that but if you did want to go further you would have to notify the delivery company uh, I do not accept that as a settlement I'll be seeking independent legal advice but make it clear that you don't accept that as a settlement and you'll be seeking independent legal advice 
because if you do accept it, you cannot proceed further because you've taken the settlement. You can't take two settlements or more settlements across on a proceedings. So pathway two now is seeking out independent legal advice. That's where you go to a lawyer, guys. And the difference is going to be, guys, the lawyer is going to run through a lot more of what you can do. It's going to be a lot more than just medical. You know, there could be psychological trauma. There could be uh, pain and anguish tied into that. Uh, there could be downtime from not being able to work added in. So the settlement starts becoming a lot larger. Now, when you go to a lawyer, the intent is not to sue someone and bleed them dry of money. The intent is to find the people who own dogs that has bitten you that has got home and contents insurance because home and contents insurance has got a legal liability section covering them on their insurance policy for dog bites. So if their dog bites someone on their property that's insured by them, then the policy responds. And the money that insurance companies have is a lot more than what someone who is not insured just trying to get by has. So if someone doesn't have insurance, doesn't have much wealth, doesn't have much money, following independent legal advice through, like you can have a chat with them of course, but if you try to sue them, there may not be any money in that pool to get out of them, so it could be a lost cause. But if they have insurance and the policy responds through and your lawyer will let you know this of course, if their policy responds through, suddenly you're in the insurance company's coffers for a payout. The independent legal advice you get, they're going to run through all of your damages and put it all together because essentially at the end of the day, what has occurred is the owner of the home or the person who lived on the property that had the dog underneath the insurance policy, they were negligent for failing to restrain the dog as a delivery person was entering the property, which makes them liable for damages. So that's the second pathway, guys, seeking out independent legal advice. And if they have got home and contents insurance, the policy responds across the dog attacks. It's going to pay out thousands, tens of thousands of dollars more for your damages, for your anguish, for your pain, for your psychological trauma, for the medical costs, for the time off work. You listed through the independent legal advice. The lawyer will run through a hell of a lot more than me because they are, of course, legal professionals. I I am not a legal professional, but that's your pathways. So the delivery companies will try to get you to settle for medical costs only, because once you've created that settlement with the delivery platform, that is all you cannot go after the customer any further from there. But if you aren't happy with the offer from the delivery company, you can say, hang on, I don't accept this offer. I'm going to seek independent legal advice and then go down the other pathway, which may yield better results for yourself. But guys, that's all I wanted to touch base on. I had a friend who had a dog situation on the weekend. And then on top of that, I heard another story about a medical settlement from one of the delivery platforms where it was just paying out for a tetanus shot after a dog attack, um, which I was, like, I, was like, I was like, really? No. Um, and they accepted the settlement from the delivery platform, which is well under what I think they would have been entitled to if they sought out independent legal advice. So guys, dog attack, get yourself safe, get yourself healed up and medically stable. Then after that, contact the delivery platform. If you don't like the offer they make back on the settlement, go to independent legal advice and follow that pathway down from there. And that, guys, is how you deal with a dog attack. That's all for today, guys. Stay safe, drive safe, keep hustling, keep grinding, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out. How long's this road? 10,000. 10,000 kilometers? That's like driving from Brisbane to Perth and back again. Not kilometers. Chris and I was going for 10,000 subscribers. Well, are we there yet? Oh, mate, not this game. I just clicked the subscribe button. How about now? Are we there yet? Just so we can shut this idiot up, hit the like and subscribe button, and here's some other videos to keep you going. There's always something new. Hey, who are you calling an idiot? More videos there, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Who are your legends? Huh, maybe I am an idiot.